from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Al Sintella down at Precinct Headquarters, Johnny. Oh, hi, Al. Sorry I missed your call a few minutes ago. What's on your mind? An actress named Amy Bradshaw. Amy? One of my favorites. Me too. But right now I seem to be looking for a guy who doesn't feel that way about her. Huh? Al, it looks like somebody's trying to kill Amy Bradshaw. Better come down here and tell me all about it. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. Location, New York City. To the Northwestern Indemnity Alliance, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Amy Bradshaw matter. The threat of an attempt on her well-insured life. Expense account item 5, $1.75. Cab from my hotel to precinct headquarters to talk to Detective Lieutenant Al Centella. Al looked about the same as the last time I'd seen him. Rugged, competent, maybe a few pounds heavier. Sit down, Johnny, sit down. Thanks. Something about Amy Bradshaw, you said. Yeah. Didn't know you were a friend of hers. Northwestern Indemnity holds a $25,000 life insurance policy on her. Here, take a look at this note. Amy got it several days ago. You are evil. You will be punished by sudden death. Oh, come on now, Johnny. A couple of nights ago, after the show, somebody shoved Amy off the curb and out into the traffic over in Times Square. Well, the same thing happens to me almost every time I'm around Times Square. You know what I smell in all this? Oh, sure. You probably smell a publicity stuff. I sure do. You think I'd fall for a thing like that? You know Amy Bradshaw very long? No. I'd seen her in a few shows, but last night was the first time I'd ever met her in person. If I didn't know you pretty well, I'd say you might be getting a little stage struck on her. Uh Uh-huh. What about the man who trailed Amy to her apartment last night? Oh? Who? I don't know. I chased him, but he had too much of a lead on me. I still wouldn't go jumping to any conclusions. Who you got to work on, for instance? Well, for one, David Coleman, her director. Then there's the producer, Emery Taylor, and his wife, Dora... From what Amy said, I gather Dora doesn't like her very well. Anybody else? And there's her agent, Mike Pomeroy. She seems to be pretty wrapped up in him. Old stable fool, huh? Yeah, looks like it. Also, a fellow named Porter Kane, who's usually hanging around the theater waiting for Amy. And finally, the man I really came to talk to you about. Who's that? Name is Bill York, her husband, but they're separated. Oh? She doesn't know where he is. You figure he might tie in somehow? He is the beneficiary of Amy's insurance policy. Well, I'll see if I can turn up an address on him for you. Okay, thanks, Al. In the meantime, I think I'll pay a call on this Porter Kane. See if I can find out just how good a fan he is. We will continue with the Bradshaw matter in a moment. Friends, how'd you like to thrill your favorite youngster with some of the most exciting toys of the year? Picture the breathless excitement of any child surrounded by six gaily colored balloon-like giant animals up to three feet long, and all for the low, low price of just one dollar. Now, first you get Bounce-O the Clown with round pot belly and funny nose. Next comes Hoppy the Australian Kangaroo. Third, there's Roscoe the Roller Skating Bear. He's two feet tall and looks almost like real. Fourth, there's Whitey the Fat Indoor Snowman. And fifth, Mortimer the Giant Mouse, 18 inches long and sure to scare the whiskers off any cat. That's five different giant animals. But now, hold your breath for the most sensational toy of all, the star of the whole Christmas season, the jolly giant talking Santa Claus, guaranteed to make everybody's Christmas a merrier one. He's a big roly-poly happy Santa. He stands erect on two legs, is actually over three feet tall and 32 inches around. Best of all, he actually talks. Just pull the tape and he says, Merry Christmas for all to hear. He's the biggest, merriest talking as Santa ever. Sure to please your youngsters and spread good cheer. Yes, Yes, giant Santa proves there really is a Santa Claus. That's a total of six giant animals made of brightly colored, preformed, sturdy latex, which the kids can easily inflate. And the cost? Just one dollar, not for each, just one dollar for all six of these lovable giants who'll turn your home into a circus parade. And here's a surprise. Mail your order today and you'll also receive absolutely free Peter the Rabbit, actually over two feet tall with big red ears almost nine inches long. But you must send now. Rush $1 plus 10 cents for packing and mailing for each set you want to Giant Animals, Box 1730 Grand Central Station, New York City. If not delighted with every one of your seven giant animals, return them to the Super Animals Company for a full refund, but keep the giant talking Santa as our gift. 
Order now. Supplies are limited. Rush $1.10 for packing and mailing for each set in cash, check, or money order to Giant Animals, Box 1730, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's $1 plus 10 cents with your name and address. Mail to Giant Animals, Box 1730. That's Box 1730, Grand Central Station, New York City. Giant Animals, Box 1730, Grand Central Station, New York City. Expense account item six, 225. Cab to the apartment of Porter Kane in the East 70s. It was an expensive looking place. I got there about noon, but Porter Kane was just finishing breakfast, accompanied by Chopin. May I offer you a cup of coffee, Mr. Dollar? Oh, thanks. A blank, please. Yes. Now, you uh, came to see me about Amy Bradshaw, I believe. That's right, Mr. Kane. I represent Northwestern Indemnity Alliance. They hold a policy on Miss Bradshaw. You perhaps want some sort of character reference on her? You, uh, might put it that way. Well, in that case, you couldn't have come to one better qualified than I. You see, Amy is my career at present. Afraid I don't understand, Mr. Kane. Well, some years ago, I was relieved of the sordid but customarily necessary task of working for my bread and butter. The result is that I have been able to devote myself to a fascinating hobby. What kind of a hobby? I collect things. Oh, the objects of my interest vary, but uh, they all have one thing in common. Oh? Uh -huh. This signet ring I'm wearing, for instance. Yes, I noticed it. Very unusual. The crest is that of the Medici family, Renaissance Italy. The only ring of its kind in the world, so far as any of the authorities on that period are aware. Uh, that uh, vase on the table. The painting on the wall. Uh, that sculpture. One of a kind, huh? Precisely. Which brings us quite logically to Amy, who is... Clearly one of a kind. So? So I plan to add Amy to my collection. Just like that, huh? I'm certain Amy will see it my way in time. And I have time. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must dress for the matinee. Uh, uh, will I see you again, Mr. Dollar? Yes. You probably will, Mr. Kane. I was glad to get out of the hothouse atmosphere of Kane's apartment. Real weird, this character. And I had a hunch I'd better keep an eye on him. Item 7, $1.65, cab fare that evening to the Criterion Theater. I arrived half an hour before curtain time and headed for Amy's dressing room. Then as I approached her door... You'll listen real careful. I'll give it to you once again. You've been tossing wrong cues to Sheila for three nights now. You've been doing everything you can to upstage her and make her look bad. Mike, it's just that I've been nervous lately. Maybe I have made a few mistakes in my hey, life. Amy, but... you know I've got plans for Sheila, and I don't want her looking bad in this play. You've got plans for Sheila. What about us? Amy, we can talk about that some other time. But for now, I just want you to understand. You're to lay off Sheila. I mean it. Is that a threat, Mike? Take it any way you like. It sounded like Pomeroy was coming outside, so I ducked around behind a piece of scenery and waited a moment. Then I went back to Amy's door. Oh, Johnny. Hello, Amy. You look tired. I am. I just had a little go-around with Mike. Pomeroy? Uh-huh. I've been fluffing some of my lines lately. He seems to think I've been doing it deliberately to make Sheila Mitchell look bad. But he's wrong. Have you found out anything yet, Johnny? No, not much. I still can't believe there's anything to it. It's so silly to let it upset me. It's silly even to give it a thought. Well, try not to, Amy. Let me worry about it. All right. Did I ever tell you it's nice having you around, Johnny? I left her dressing room and started for the alley door, but somebody stepped out in front of me. It was Mike Pomeroy. Hello, Dollar. Oh, hi, Pomeroy. I was just talking to Dave Coleman, the director. He told me uh, he was the one who sent for you. He told me why. You didn't know about the threatening letter Amy got? No, no, I didn't. Look, uh, Dollar, every actress I've ever known has gotten at least one note like that during her career. You don't think this should be taken too seriously, then? No. Amy's pretty nervous these days. And as long as you're around stirring things up, she'll be worried about it. If there's anything to be done about it, I can handle it. In other words, you want me to mind my own business, is that it? You said that, Dollar. I didn't. It might not be a bad idea. Funny thing. 
When somebody tells me to lay off a case, my interest in it always doubles. After the final curtain, I went backstage to wait for Amy. The stage door was open, and I could see Porter Kane waiting in the alley outside. So I went over to him. Well, Mr. Dollar, good evening. Hello, Kane. On duty again tonight? Perhaps that's one way of putting it. I thought I might have a little chat with Amy after she's changed. I'm afraid she has a date. Oh? Do you happen to know with whom? Yeah, me. Uh, Mr. Dollar, are you suggesting that I'm to regard you as some sort of rival? Not at all, Kane. I'm just suggesting that I'm a friend of Amy's. I see. Good night, Mr. Dollar. After Kane left, I stood beside the stage door and tried to figure out some of the angles on this case. There were too many of them. By the time I went in, the theater was dark, except for a dim light bulb over the stage, and everyone had gone. Everybody, that is, except Amy. I ran into the darkened theater. She was standing horrified next to the stairway by the dressing rooms, her eyes fixed on something that lay on the floor. Johnny, I was on my way out to meet you. I heard a swish through the air. This heavy sandbag, it barely missed me. Oh, Johnny! Stay back against the wall, Amy. You'll be okay there. I climbed the long ladder up to the catwalk above the stage where they sometimes use the sandbags to balance hunks of scenery. It was dark up there. I started edging along the catwalk. Suddenly, my foot hit a loose board. I almost lost my balance. A loose board that could have been left for me. And it was a long, long drop down to the stage. Whoever had been up there knew the theater pretty well. Finally, I went back down to Amy. She was trembling. Johnny. It's okay, Amy. It's okay. Johnny. Maybe I didn't take it seriously before, but I do now. Somebody dropped that sandbag from up there deliberately. Somebody is trying to kill me, and I'm scared, Johnny. I'm scared. Johnny Dollar will be back in a moment to tell you about tomorrow's episode. Friends, send for your set of some of the most exciting toys of the year. Six giant inflatable toys for only one dollar. Some up to three feet tall. You get Bounceo the Happy Clown, Hoppy the Australian Kangaroo, Roscoe the two feet long roller skating bear, Whitey the Fat Indoor Snowman, Mortimer the Giant Mouse 18 inches long, and last but not least, the Great Giant Talking Santa, a roly-poly giant over three feet tall and 32 inches around the belly that actually says Merry Christmas out loud when you pull the tape. That six sensational giant toys for only one dollar, made of sturdy, gaily colored latex that the kids can easily inflate. Send one dollar for each set to Giant Animals, Box 1730, Grand Central Station, New York City. And if you order right now, you get Peter the Rabbit over two feet tall absolutely free. If not delighted with your giant animals, your money refunded immediately. Order today, you may never hear this offer again. Rush one dollar plus ten cents for packing and mailing in cash, check, or money order to Giant Animals, Box 1730, Grand Central Station, New York City. That's one dollar plus ten cents for each set with your name and address to Giant Animals, Box 1730, Grand Central Station, New York City. <laughs> Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of the Amy Bradshaw Matter. Tomorrow, a man steps onto the stage from out of the past and into a role he doesn't want to play. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 